There has been a growing trend in shoulder replacements toward placing reversed implants. Historically, anatomic shoulder replacement was the more common way we did things. That's where we replaced the ball with a new ball and the socket with an artificial socket. The Orthopedics Journal reports that in about 2014, reverse shoulder replacements overtook anatomic shoulder replacements as the most common type. So what is a reverse shoulder replacement and why are so many patients getting them? When we do a reverse shoulder replacement, we put a ball where the socket was and a socket where the ball used to be, hence the name. Reverse shoulder replacement was born out of necessity. You see, the normal ball and socket relationship of the shoulder only works as long as the supporting muscles are intact, especially when it comes to shoulder replacement. For patients with a rotator cuff tear, an anatomic or forward-facing replacement, it just doesn't work. It's not possible due to instability in the upward direction and lack of power from the torn rotator cuff muscles. That's where a reverse shoulder replacement really shines. It allows the shoulder to become a deep dish ball and socket joint, overcoming the upward instability of the joint. Also, the new reverse mechanics allow the deltoid muscle to power the new shoulder instead of the torn rotator cuff muscle. Initially, this was the main reason for doing a reverse shoulder replacement, giving great options to people who had a big rotator cuff tear and also arthritis. However, in recent years, the list of indications or reasons for doing the reverse replacement has grown. That includes a big rotator cuff tear without arthritis, posterior or backside socket wear and instability of the joint, bad fractures and redo surgeries. There's even a growing trend to preemptively do a reverse shoulder replacement on all patients with shoulder arthritis, even if they have an intact rotator cuff. The reasoning goes that this implant will keep on functioning even if the patient tears their rotator cuff in the future. Considering the implants we use today can be expected to give over 20 years of service, that might not be a bad insurance policy. But hang on, are there any downsides of doing a reverse shoulder replacement? Well, the reverse mechanics give the deltoid muscle a longer lever arm with which to power the shoulder. With all the extra work the deltoid is doing, the acromion, which is this bone here that the deltoid is attached to, it can develop a stress fracture. Now that happens about 3% of the time, and it's most common in the first year while the acromion is increasing its bone density. Reverse replacements can also dislocate, sometimes requiring a redo operation. With a reverse shoulder replacement, it is also harder to fully restore internal rotation. That makes it harder to reach up behind your back to wash or to dress. There's also a cosmetic change that happens to the shoulder's appearance due to the lengthening of the shoulder. You also need to consider that in the future, you might have to have the replacement revised or redone if the parts start to wear out. Reverse replacements consume more bone stock and that might not leave as many good options. So a common scenario I see is this. I meet a patient with a normal case of shoulder arthritis. Usually we would do a total shoulder replacement, but the MRI shows partial damage of the rotator cuff tendon. And you can see that here this um, sort of white stuff inside the tendon. What should we do? Do we trust that rotator cuff to keep working? My take is this. For many people with shoulder arthritis, anatomic shoulder replacement and not reverse replacement is still the better way to go. It preserves better motion without the risks we just discussed. It also gives better redo options in the future. If at all possible, I always try to do an anatomic shoulder replacement. If we encounter a partial thickness rotator cuff tear, we can patch the rotator cuff with a dermal patch or a graft. This gives the shoulder and rotator cuff a new lease on life. However, I always advise my patients that we want to do the best surgery possible. If there are any bad issues like excessive socket wearer or a very bad rotator cuff tendon, a reverse shoulder will work better in the long run despite some of the trade-offs. Thank you for watching. If you want to know more about the best in shoulder and arm care, please subscribe. Also hit the like button so more people can learn from the video.